Okay. Uh, thank you very much for agreeing to do the conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, so, uh, first of all, we'd like to know how you got motivated into mathematics. Um, you have to understand this a long time ago. <laughs> um, well, I, I always uh, had uh, an ability in class and so on, so um, it was something natural that I liked and I, I enjoyed and I was really good at. But then uh, when I finished high school, I, I didn't know that, well, it certainly didn't know you could make a living being a mathematician. So I, I started engineering. I did a year and a half of um, engineering. But during the courses, uh, I realized that I wasn't interested so much in the physics side and the engineering side of problems, but more in the mathematics. So somehow I got to eventually to find out that one can do mathematics just itself. And I switched. Um, and, and looking back, you know, I have some notes from when I was in high school. I look at them, I see they don't make a lot of sense, but they look like mathematics, you know, like moving symbols around and so on. So clearly, I had uh, I had uh, an interest and uh, and then perhaps the mentality already. But, uh, it took a while for it to come to center stage. Uh, was there anyone who motivated you in your childhood or during your college years? Um, I don't think I could point, pinpoint to any particular person. I mean, in high school, uh, math teacher was encouraging. Was pleased that, that I enjoyed it and so on. Uh, in, uh, in college, um, I wouldn't say, I mean, until maybe later in the I didn't graduate my advice for the time, so I didn't encourage the person. Yeah. Uh, so your work is in uh, number theory. Can you briefly tell us what kind of things you do? Um, well, I... Yeah, I do number theory. Um, I guess at the moment, last um, five years or ten years now, it's been uh, in two flavors. I mean, one is the, uh, computational number theory. So I do a, a lot of. Um, I use the computer as a, as a means for understanding. So I, I like this uh, quote that I. Put. I in a section Facebook page of uh, Hamming, uh, the, the purpose of computation is not numbers, but insight. That's something I subscribe to. Um, so, but for that, of course, you have to be able to do the calculations. So a lot of, a lot of my work involves uh, thinking and, and uh, trying to see how things can actually get calculated, which is uh, well, sometimes half of the effort, you know. Um, so there's that aspect. Um, somehow, people do mathematics in different ways, and this whole debate as to whether examples are needed or not needed, and the people that, that would uh, never work on any given example, but always complete generality. I'm more on the other camp where examples are at a very good mean. Inside into the problem, and certainly um, computing examples. I mean, that's what you're doing. You some so, in, in I mean, computing in the sense of actually sitting down and typing the computer code that will actually spit out a number, not not sort of in the sense of uh, developing algorithms that run in such and such time and so on. I'm going to the other aspect um, is uh, my collaboration at the House on the Year that started uh, some time ago. And that is uh, the number theory to um, get uh, information, insight, uh, theorems uh, on certain, uh, certain varieties. So this 
connection between counting points on point of varieties in finite fields and, uh, and cohomology, which is something that has been used to great effect many times. Harden and Nara Seaman, interestingly enough, people that somehow are associated with ICP, Nara Seaman, one of the first heads of mathematics here, and Lotta Getschnik. points on the surface. Um, so that's um, that's sort of um, less of a computational thing, uh, but um, more, more combinatorial, more having to do with combinatorics. And uh, this is stuff that we discussed when we were uh, here. Um, um, counting, you know, I've been giving talks about this thing, about the little paper for um, conference proceedings about combinatorics as geometry. It's like uh, two different, uh, different uh, points of view, something. Combinatorics is a street, geometry is a but the two things that are very much related in uh, thoughts about counting on a field, form things about the object and the complex numbers, and vice versa. So these are two main top topics in the last uh, years. All right. So you have uh, written a book called Experimental Number Theory. Uh, somehow, people don't connect experiments with mathematics. Um, so what was what is the idea behind the book? Yeah, well, so it's a bit of what I was saying um, on my first, um, my first topic. Um, yeah, um, yeah I, I say in the preface of that, book that um, you know, uh, Castles is, um, is, uh, is supposed to have said that, I don't have a precise quote of where is it, he said it or down, but that number theory is to a large extent in experimental science. Um, and if you look in history, you suddenly see quite a bit of that. I mean, a very, very classical example, I mentioned also in my book, but it's a well-known example that many people quoted, uh, is Gauss. You know, maybe you would think of Gauss as someone who would um, maybe do a lot of number crunching, but um, at some point, uh, he was studying this algorithm, the arithmetic potential mean, and he computed it for one, I think, and the square root of two, and this. And he computed it to, I don't know, 20 decimals or something, and he, he recognized the number. He realized that that number was also a number that he had seen before, uh, calculation that. That um, somebody else had done before. No, I forget. Um, and he said, "Okay, well, this, he, has, he had a diary. You know, he had a diary where he wrote uh, short entries as to various things about his progress in mathematics." And he said, "Well, this clearly is going to open a whole new world. This connection between things, and indeed it did. Um, so and that, you know, to me, sounds like experimental science." I mean, um, compute something for one purpose and connect it to something else that is for a different purpose. And, and I think a lot of number theory uh, has uh, happened that way. So notice connection is the, the pursuit of die conjecture, for heaven's sake, very much of an experimental fact. Um, they hurt us with a diary how the, well, it was phrased eventually in this more modern way with the L function, but originally it was simply this ratio of the number of points in an elliptic curve over a finite field by the, by the size of the finite field, then taking the product over all primes and seeing how it behaves, you take the product to a certain bound and correlating that with the, with the rank of the elliptic curve. The heuristics being that if the rank was big, then there would be more points that kind of 
reduce mod p on the curve, and so you, you will reflect on the number of points on the curve of the finite field being bigger, so to speak, and therefore the product growing faster. And that, you know, it was completely done uh, on an experimental level. Uh, you know, it's not experiment, uh, you know, experiments are done with thinking, no? You, know, you don't just uh, put uh, two compounds together and watch it explode or whatever. I mean, there's always some thinking behind, but but certainly the conjecture was was made, was eventually come upon and formulated from a completely experimental basis. Uh, since you mentioned the conjecture, so how close are we to each solution now? What do we think? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I don't really work on that subject, so I don't know, you know exactly the current status, but um, we know it, of course, we know quite a bit for when the rank is zero and the rank is one by a lot of uh, very impressive work. Um, but beyond that, I, I think we don't really know. I mean, we know things from, from uh, Bhargava about things on average, and you know, we do know quite a bit. It's been quite a lot of progress is made, but um, something about the complete solution seems quite far at the moment. Uh, going from one uh, millennium problem to another. So recently, there was a big uh, uh, news about uh, one Nigerian mathematician solving the Riemann hypothesis. Uh, did you? See the news? Um, I saw the headline uh, in actually in an Argentinian newspaper. Um, I don't, I don't have any other uh, thoughts. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, one, uh, my first reaction is to be skeptical, but uh, you know. Uh, in the in the in the similar topic. Uh, so is there, do we feel that there is some gap between what mathematicians do and what the general public's perception is? Is there some gap in the communication? Um, for example, we don't hear such kind of things uh, for, for other branches of science or, or different uh, aspects of uh, knowledge. We don't think, we don't hear what things, you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, like uh, there, is, there is this big hoopla about the Riemann hypothesis. Uh, well, I mean, people, uh, I don't know, sure. Um, maybe I don't know. I mean, there's been a, some hooplas like this about things in physics. You know, somebody was telling me about um, something that that an experiment uh, done in CERN or, or anyway somewhere in Europe that uh, that seemed to prove that the that the speed of light was uh, something was moving to a speed faster than the speed of light, and it was a big deal. Uh, and um, and then it turned out to be an error that was traced to some problem with cables in, in the experiment. I think that made the news, and um, you know, I guess um, maybe if it has to do with Einstein, then <laughs> and it suddenly <laughs> um, it's true. I mean, I guess mathematics is, has maybe the, a bit of the ring of of something particularly exotic and way up in the in the in, in the ivory tower then then people uh, pay more attention when when there is such claims um, yeah maybe there is I think it's, it's it's difficult to explain what is the one does I mean um, whereas other other subjects perhaps uh, there are more concrete evidence that one could show and becomes more, more visible or comprehensible. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have been in ICTP now for quite a while. So what has been your experience here till now? Yeah, I've been here um, uh, three years and a bit. Um, I'm really happy. I mean, I quite like it. It's a great institution and does a lot of good things. Um, it's uh, to me it's satisfying to, to see that uh, Things besides besides research, it's something to be a bit um, hard to get into, so hard to get complete uh, satisfactions from. Um, one, uh, you know, what we do here, I I, I tend to think it does does make a difference for a lot of people, and, and so it's um, it's a, a great uh, satisfaction to be part of that process. 
contribute. So I'm really happy. Uh, do you see any any kind of difference between the way mathematics is done in in the developing nations and and the developed nations? Not really. Um, I think mathematics is really only. Um, no, I mean I don't think there is any difference. I think uh, sometimes the problem with doing mathematics or, or I say mathematics because what I know because we need you know, other sciences. Um, you know, doing mathematics in the developing world is, is often difficult because of um, isolation, because of um, distance. And, uh, you know, when I, I grew up in Argentina and, 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 and the States, I remember quite distinctly when I first uh, got there that there were a lot of things that back in uh, back home they had this aura, this sort of steep incomprehensible, unreachable theories, you know, things like, oh, you know, this is beyond what, what we can understand. And maybe never explicitly mentioned that way, but you know, that feeling was there. And I remember getting to the United States that some of these things were just simply completely taken for granted. Oh, you know, this is, no, we're past that. You know, this is something, you just learn in a course. I mean, what is something? Um, so that kind of um, that kind of environment, I think, is what maybe uh, uh, so it becomes something uh, of a lot of you know, you're more alone. You know, you have to sort of kind of fight for, for that um, that kind of knowledge. Uh, Confidence in, in your own uh, understanding of things, much more of your own, and, and that that's often what makes it. Uh, but uh, it, I don't think it's uh, now with the advent of internet, things have become slightly easy uh, to get uh, more information. Uh, you just have to log in and look for it. So, do you think uh, the way we do mathematics has changed now? I think, oh yes, I think so. Definitely, um, we're probably still going to see more, and, and we have to see how things pan out. But uh, you know, um, I remember very clearly uh, when um, Miguel Walsh uh, got the uh, Ramanujan Prize. You know, um, I presented his, introduced him to the time of the prize and the ceremony. And I, I mentioned something that he had, um, he had said in an interview that gave to uh, our YCP, that um, some of the stuff that he did were only possible in this era, in the way he did them, that is. Um, so, you know, he, of course, mentioned uh, the access to papers, which is that's something new, the easy access to more, exactly, more or less anything that gets published or has been published. Um, but also, he talked about uh, Terence Tao's blog, and he said that uh, some of the things that that, um, that went into his thinking about the problem that he solved had, had uh, arisen from reading various entries on Tao's blog. And the discussions, not just of what Tao was saying, but the discussions that people, how people reacted to, to, to the process. In other words, to the discussion. So I, I think what is new is that you don't just see somebody's uh, paper or somebody's opinion or such. You see discussions that are, are accessible to others. Um, and I think that is certainly going to change and it's already continuing. Already, uh, and, and the possibilities for someone who is geographically away from where most of these discussions are place. Um, you know, this project of the of, uh, polymath, for example, I think that's quite an interesting, very interesting experiment, a social experiment in mathematics, uh, sort of this pulling of 
resources, like uh, exchanging ideas and working in some sort of uh, loose, organ loose organized team. Um, that's something we can do. And, um, and it's really fantastic, I think. And see how that kind of evolves in time. Um, but this is the kind of thing that I, that I think, going back to what I was saying earlier, that is the kind of thing you don't you often back in the developing world, this kind of environment, you know, stuff that you hear at lunch, you hear uh, on the corridors, sometimes uh, are extremely useful, um, kind of spark all kinds of things in your mind. And, um, well, you don't have the same, you're not in a, at lunch with so-and-so in the corridor listening to someone's conversation, but you may have a discussion online uh, about and that kind of place play a similar role. Yeah. Uh, there is a new polymath project that was started uh, a few days ago. Uh-huh. And you're part of it? Or? Uh, no, I'm just following the the blogs. Uh, right. Well, there you go. You so you see, you hear the blog, you listen, you see the blog, you see how people think in a in a in a very informal setting. You know, when it's completely different from from what the published paper might look like at the end. Um, so I think that's just uh, fantastic. That's really great. Uh, so the, I want to ask you about your project on hypergeometric motifs. Mm -hmm. um, so how far is it from completion? Ah, uh, well, at the moment we our plan is to write a book, which we have already several hundred pages that still put in a legal form. This book with me, with me and uh, Mark Watson Robert. Um, I hope that it's not very long because it's, it's been going on now for quite a while and other people are starting to write papers and all so um, it's coming from a moment that it's out there. And the plan of the book would be somewhat unusual in the sense that we're going to try to put down everything that we know, whether we it or not. And this phase we discussed before quite a bit of computational evidence that not just some wild guesses but that we are confident how to work but not put every dot on every eye. Um, so I I hope also I think we can have it out because we might just fun for others use this data to, to contribute to play their own way subjects. Um, I think uh, a, great, a great source of anything else, an example, uh, or again, an insight into this, all this is number kind. Uh, in your view, what are the most important mathematical problems that we have now? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny because I somehow I don't consider myself as someone who, who thinks in terms of problems so much. I, mean, I think they're you know, a different kind of. You know, there, are, there are the people that that are really very much on one thing, one problem, anything, um, whatever um, they can use to finish the problem. Fair enough. And I, I I tend to mostly push for uh, my own understanding of things, you know, things along the way it happens. But, so I I don't think I would uh, uh, say. Uh, I think it would be nice to know a whole lot of things we don't know. That's for sure. Um, you know, great you know, human hypothesis. Of course, we would. Um, and I think quite quite a remarkable fact to do it. But how is it that it happens to that way? Um things about health functions amazing to you know, that uh health functions have a function of equation. A lot of things to be 
Um, but I wouldn't uh, put it as a listing, you know, like a whole bunch. Uh, anyway, totally the clay problems are you can't go wrong with those. So apart from uh, mathematics, do you enjoy doing something else as a hobby? Yeah, I mean I play uh, some music like that. Guitar. Um I also like reading about history. Uh, your your wife is also a mathematician and your daughter is also studying mathematics. So is it in the genes of your family that everyone goes into mathematics? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't. Think there are. I don't know of anybody of my ancestors. Uh, uh, finally, uh, do you have any any kind of advice for young students uh, who want to take up uh, mathematics as a career or to study? Um, I asked the same question to the and uh, I like his answer. He said. Um, you have the ability, you have the talent, that is the duty to do it. It's the duty to pursue science. I kind of tend to agree. I mean, when one should uh, really push on what one likes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and you know, work hard. And, and uh, try to find out what uh, things that I do. I think one of the measures of, of this profession is that, that we have luxury doing do it. That's something that. Uh, Aware of that, quite, quite a special mission that to be professional scientist. Um, and I think that, um, that uh, I mean, the thing is, I, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. <laughs> it's hard to, to give it as an advice, but uh, maybe advice should be. Might be half a time, but uh, well, let go. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for talking with us. Yeah, well, thank you.